We just showed you the first 20 minutes of our interview a few hours ago with Tony Bobulinski, well-known international businessman, who was asked by the Biden family to do business with them in China. He met with the former Vice President Joe Biden two separate times, and they talked about the China business deal. Now, this information has been out for several weeks. It's been in the hands of a number of different news organizations. The reason you're hearing a lot of this for the first time tonight on this show is because they have resolutely ignored it and tried to suppress the story. Joe Biden has rarely been asked about it, though there is an enormous amount of detail and documentation that no one has refuted because it's real. This topic did come up because the president pushed it at last week's presidential debate. And what was notable was that Joe Biden didn't deny any specifics about his connections to the Chinese Communist Party, his family doing business there, he himself participating in that business. Instead, Biden dismissed the entire story out of hand and suggested that Tony Bobulinski, who is a veteran, a former naval officer, was part of a Russian disinformation campaign aimed at this country. His evidence for that? Well, there wasn't any. Instead, he cited a letter from, quote, 50 foreign nas former national intelligence folks, almost all of them partisans, every one of them a liar. None of them had directly assessed the information. Not one of them called Tony Bobulinski. They knew nothing. Joe Biden said that on stage. And so when we spoke to Tony Bobulinski, we asked him his reaction to that. And here's what he said. Tell me about the conversation that you had with Joe Biden. What, what did he say to you? Uh, you mean the morning after he spoke? That's right. Um, it just, it was, uh, there was a, 10 people running around, getting him something to drink, and we were backstage in a cramped space, and he asked me to walk with him out to the car, and he just asked, you know, how I did and uh, what I thought of his speech, and uh, I thought he did a great job in the speech, and obviously cancer is a very serious thing that we should all be working together to solve. I just lost a sister-in-law within the last two weeks, uh, sadly, to cancer. And um, uh, and then he just sort of asked me to keep an eye on his son and his brother. Yeah. What, what do you think he meant by that? Um, I think he was conscious of things, and, you know, I can't speak for him. Uh, maybe right. I would love for him to go on record. Um, you know, as I referenced earlier, I'm only sitting here because they have not, not only have they not gone on record, they've denied it, and they've tarred my family name in a long history of serving this country, and have other congressmen now talking about Russian disinformation. This whole uh, smear on Joe Biden uh, comes from the Kremlin. I held a top secret clearance from the NSA and the DOE. I served this country for four years in one of the most elite environments in the world, Naval Nuclear Power Training Command. And to have a congressman out there speaking about Russian disinformation or Joe Biden at a, uh, at a public debate referencing Russian disinformation when he knows he sat face to face with me, that I was traveled around the world with his son and his brother, to say that and associate that with my name is absolutely disgusting to me. Have you, did you complain about that? I mean, to suggest that you were committing treason or a part of a foreign attack on our democracy, which is how they characterized it. I mean, that, that's such a, a serious and, and I think unfair charge. Did yeah. you bring this up with them? Well, in basic form, you're exactly right. They are publicly accusing me of treason right now, um, treating me like I'm insignificant or the uh, 50 years of history that my family served this country is insignificant. And that's why I'm sitting here having this. I assure you, this is the absolute last place I want to be right now and the last thing I want to be doing right now. But I feel like I have a patriotic duty to this country and every American citizen to go on record and to find the facts for them and let them do their own work. Let them decide how they view those facts or not. But for the Biden family to deny these facts and then not only deny them, they could have just said no comment. But they didn't say no comment. They then brought in Russian disinformation and basically associated my name with that, which is absolutely disgusting to me. And I had to go on the record. Last weekend, I was in Virginia. Uh, sadly, my sister-in-law passed away at around, I think, 6.38 Saturday morning. That's the wife of my brother who spent 28 years serving this country as a naval flight officer and just retired. So you can imagine me dealing with that and the tragedy of that. When I saw Adam Schiff go on record talking about Russian disinformation after this email had been posted online by the New York Post, and remember that email was to me from James Gillier, right? It wasn't, you know, I wasn't blind carbon or CC'd on that. It was to me stating that I was going to be the CEO of this enterprise. Um, I had, uh, I was at the end of my rope. 
And so I called Rob Walker and I told him that if that statement isn't retracted by Adam, or, uh, Congressman Schiff by midnight on Sunday, that I was going on record and I was disclosing all the facts to the American government, to the American citizen and the world. I was hoping the Bidens would do the right thing or Schiff would retract his statement, but I could not allow another minute, another hour or day for my family's name to be associated or, or muddied up around Russian disinformation. So even as I sit here today, I would ask the Biden family to come on record and stop using my name or associating it with Russian disinformation. It's absolutely disgusting. So this is Rob Walker, the representative of the Biden family. I believe his wife worked for the Biden family, um, apparently. So you said this to him. I, I won't go public. I just want them to retract the accusation that I'm an instrument of Russian disinformation. What did he say? That's correct. Um, Rob is under a tremendous amount of stress. Right. Uh, obviously, his uh, wife and a, and, and a child. And he uh, said, L -l listen, let me make some calls. Let me call George who's Hunter Biden's lawyer, and, and see what I can do. But he sort of presented it as if that's going to be impossible for me to get done. And, um, you know, I'm not naive. I know that's not impossible. To, that's a single phone call from Joe Biden to Adam Schiff saying, basically, go on record and retract your statement. You got over your skis. And uh, when I, you know, I was up late that night, and when the statement wasn't retracted, come Monday morning, I was ready to go on record. And what... How that record was, I was willing to go in front of any senator, any congressman, the Department of Justice, the FBI, or sit here with you, Tucker, and basically provide the facts to the American people and let them make their decision. This isn't a political focus of mine. People were accusing my family of treason um, after I served this country and defended this country. So the reason you wound up here in this interview and, and I, I just want to affirm for our audience, I, I don't think you had any desire to do this interview. Absolutely no desire. Is because nobody else told your story. So were you surprised, given the, the trove of documents you have, given the credibility that I, I think is apparent that you have, that no other news organization took the time to unpack this story? Um, surprised is probably uh, an understatement of the year. Shocked, because... Um, it would be different if this was my word against Jim Biden, Hunter Biden, and Joe Biden. Right. That would be a very slippery slope, not something I would take the personal and family risk on it. But I've provided more documents and facts that validate times, meetings, who participated. That email to me on May 13th was generated by somebody else sent to me. It wasn't me generating. These text messages that I've provided are Hunter Biden in the first person, Jim Biden in the first person, James Gillier in the first person, Rob Walker in the first person. It's not me generating the text messages. It's them speaking. So you can interview them. The FBI can interview them. Our government can interview them. But I was shocked that not only the media is not only discussing this, they're going to the other extreme. They're dismissing it as Russian disinformation. This country has heard enough about Russia. We went through three years of every day, Russia, Russia, Russia. It's just absurd. The Cold War is over. And they're saying it about your family. Yes. The Biden family knew that you're going public with this. And you spoke to Rob Walker about it. Again, the, the self-described Biden family representative. And Biden family, the meaning Joe Biden as well. What was his response when you let him know that you were going public with this? Uh, trying to coach me. <laughs> trying to sort of say, hey, we don't want to do that. We don't want, you know, press trucks out in front of our house. I'm going to have to move. Uh, I could lose my job. Um, and uh, all that, um, you know, I'm not trying to cause any harm to anyone in this situation, right. let alone Rob Walker and his family, James Gillier and, uh, and his family. Um, but basically, Rob's position was, if you go on record with all these facts, you'll bury all of us. If he doesn't come out on record, I am uh, providing the facts. Tony, you're just going to just you. bury all of us, man. What was your response to that? Um... I was focused on pushing these guys to do the right thing, to demonstrate an ounce of integrity in front of the American people. They all know the facts. I live the facts. And luckily for the American people, all the facts are extremely well documented. I'm irrelevant in this discussion. 
So I can write off, but the American people can read these texts, listen to the recording that you just played, read the legal documents that were executed in Delaware, and they can form their own conclusion. They don't need me to form the conclusion for them. Give us a sense of your contacts with Hunter Biden. I just, a lot of this is complex. There's a lot that we're not, and this is television, so we're not putting, you know, everything that we have on the screen right. because we can't. But for those who might suspect that you don't, didn't really have a lot of contact with Hunter Biden, give us a sense of some of the places where you had conversations with him yeah. and over what time frame. So, um, obviously, as we already discussed throughout 2015, in 2016, while Joe was still the sitting vice president of the United States, these guys had been doing extensive work around the world in places like Oman, Luxembourg, Romania, that I was being made aware of, but I obviously hadn't come off the bench and agreed to be part of this. I'm, I'm sorry, I've got to interrupt you there. O Oman, Luxembourg, Romania. Correct. So they don't speak any of these languages. Neither one of these guys has any record of success in business. Neither one has a background in international business. Why would they be doing business in Oman, Luxembourg, and Romania? Uh, because, because they have relationships and they have the Biden name that they're able to set up meetings and get people to jump through hoops uh, in an interest to garner favor with the sitting vice president, Joe Biden. So that, so it sounds like Gillier is a legitimate business guy, a, di a you know, someone who's, who's yes, fluent yes. in the language of yes. international Yes, James business. Gillier, you know, served his country. He's British. Yes. Uh, he's traveled around the world for decades. He's a very low-profile uh, right. individual. But he is, uh, he's sharp, and he's as legitimate as they come. It sounds it. But Hunter Biden and Jim Biden have a well-documented, decades-long record of business disasters. Did you get any sense that either one of these guys was qualified to be conducting this kind of business? The only qualification they had was the Biden name. But they seem to have parlayed that into quite a few deals in quite a few countries. And I interrupted you. So, so give me, continue with where they were doing these deals. Yeah, so you had asked, you know, uh, the extent of my communication with Hunter Biden. So when I uh, decided to come off the bench and, and uh, entertain me in the CEO of Sinohawk Holdings, um, obviously, I was brought up to speed on the work that they had been doing in Oman, Luxembourg, France, Romania, Kazakhstan, and stuff like that, because that was all going to be integrated into Sinohawk Holdings. Um, and so you asked to the extent that I spent time with Hunter Biden. I personally was in Bucharest, Romania, with Hunter Biden, Jim Biden, um, uh, James Gillier, Rob Walker. Uh, I was in Monaco. Um, for the, you know, annual Grand Prix there. Uh, I was supposed to sit with Hunter Biden. Um, I met him, uh, I uh, met on the patio of his hotel, uh, and I sat there and waited for two hours. Um, and uh, you can imagine how uh, angry and I was frustrated after sitting there for two hours waiting for him without a text, a phone call to let me know I can't make it or I'm tied up. And uh, in a text that I think you guys are aware of and saw, the next day, um, he aggressively comes back at me that, uh, he couldn't attend the meeting that he himself set up. I stepped away from family and friends on, on the yacht that I was on with my friends to go sit with him uh, for a couple hours. And uh, he's effectively screaming into the phone that he could not pick up the uh, a phone and text me because he was with the Ukrainians and Mikola, and the founder of Burisma, and that he was fighting for the only income he has on the Kazakhstan deal that apparently he negotiated. Now, I had no exposure to the Kazakhstan deal. I'm not aware of any of the particulars of the Kazakhstan deal. I just know for a fact there is a Kazakhstan deal because Hunter Biden in first person told me there was in the text that I think you guys have and you will show to the American people. Uh, it's not my job to determine what that deal is. I'll leave that up to the FBI or the Senate and the Congress to uh, figure that out. I, I just want to restate this. You are not a grifter. You're not someone who's selling access. You're a legitimate businessman who's done deals in a lot of different countries. So I just want you to assess once more, is there anything about Hunter Biden's personal experience, personal qualifications that would justify him doing a deal in Kazakhstan? Uh, absolutely nothing. The only thing that he had was the Biden family name and the fact that his father at one point obviously was a sitting vice president and potentially would run as a future president. It sounds like a remarkably ambitious international business program they had running. Extensive. He and his uncle. Extensive. 
Um, th this is a small point, but I, I, I can't get over it. So you saw a number of reporters say, again, in an effort to bat away your story, your testimony on this, that the chairman referred to in a bunch of these emails was not Joe Biden. It was, in fact, the government of China. When you see people refer to the chairman thinks this, the chairman thinks that, they're talking about China and not Joe Biden. So I want to put up on the screen. Here is a text message you received from Hunter Biden to you. Hey, Tony, I have an idea. In light of the fact that we are at an impasse of sorts and both James's lawyers and my chairman gave an emphatic no, I think we should all meet in Romania on Tuesday next week. And so you're hearing reporters say that chairman was, in fact, the Chinese government. Here you have Rob Walker responding to you. Clearly, there's some confusion over this. And he's saying, and I'm going to put this on the screen now. When he said, when Hunter Biden said his chairman, he was talking about his dad. Correct. There's two chairmen in the story. There's Chairman Yi, who was the chairman of CFC. Yes. In that text from Hunter Biden, he was not talk talking about the chairman of CFC. And what Hunter's referencing there is he spoke with his father, and his father is giving an emphatic no to the ask that I had, which was putting proper governance in place around Oneida Holdings. So Joe Biden is vetoing your plan for putting stricter governance in the company. I mean, and, and it's, it's right here yeah, in the yeah, emails. Yeah, Tucker, I want to be very careful in front of the American people. That is not me writing that. That is not me claiming that. That is Hunter Biden writing on his own phone, typing in that I spoke with my chairman, referencing his father. If the world thinks that that my chairman is not his father, then Hunter Biden would come forward and go on record and state to the world. But you my... have the Biden family representatives, Rob Walker, saying right here, May 19th, no. When he said his chairman, he was talking about his dad. Exactly. 